Hey guys, I wanted to make a quick video about how to properly record Photoshop uh, because it can be, well, frankly, a pain to set up, but there are some simple things that you need to know that can take quite a while to find. I spent several hours researching, trying to figure out what exactly was wrong before I could find it, and so I thought I'd take all of the information and put it into a simple, straightforward video. So, you can use whatever you want and whatever works for you to record uh, Photoshop, especially for time lapses, but I use Open Broadcaster because it's simple, it's easy, and it's frankly fast um, and free, which is great because, I mean, you could use Camtasia if you wanted to, but I didn't really want to spend $300 to just record a couple of time lapses. Um, so when you open OBS for the first time or Open Broadcaster, you have this window and it's completely blank and you have no idea what's going on. So on your bottom left hand side, you have a little box called Scenes, and basically you can name these whatever you want. And when you make them, it makes a new notation of where you can select video sources from, which is right here. So you make a new scene, in this case I just have my main scene called Scene, and my sources. Now what sources are, are where you are actually capturing your video from. from. So you have window, monitor, image, text, whatever. So 90% of the time you're probably going to want to use window, except for the case of Photoshop. Because it does not play nice with window, there are ways to make it work, but it's not worth the trouble, quite frankly. So you just have to really use monitor. Um, and either way, you have to disable arrow to make it work. So you set up your monitor, and you get this, and you figure out which monitor you're recording. I have a two monitor set up, so I'm recording on my second one, uh, which is, you can see here. <clears throat> um, you have your simple settings, and all of these can just are automatically set, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, so that little warning right there was telling me the arrow was still on and I'll have really bad performance and over here under settings if you click it you bring up the general settings and under video there's a little box down here that says disable arrow and what this does is disables arrow for Windows Vista and Windows 7 if you have Windows 8 or 8.1 you don't have to worry about any of this because this won't be a problem for you but if you don't disable this you'll have incredible lag um, even in time lapse, which is really low performance impact. Um, so you have to have this disabled in order for it to work. So if I'll just disable it right now, and you guys can see what it looks like once it's disabled. It just takes away the transparency and the gradients from my menu bars, which isn't a big deal, frankly, especially if you're recording Photoshop on, say, a Cintiq or um, anything like that, where the bottom bar isn't even there. You're just recording the application. So under here, there's a lot of different settings that you can play with, and this is my sweet spot. Uh, I have a quality balance of 8 and CBR is set to off. What CBR is for, if you're doing streaming, it'll make it so you have a constant bandwidth usage so there won't be any big spikes. Um, over here, I have buffer size set to 0, which makes it so that it will use whatever buffer size it needs to capture the quality, um, but really from my experience for time lapses, you can really just set all of this to the base 100 KBS and a quality balance of 8 and be perfectly fine. Um, you can even use CBR if you want, it's just having it off makes the file size much smaller. Um, and so that's pretty much it for there. Up next is the video settings and you just have to make sure your arrow is disabled. And then last but not least, you have the advanced settings. Um, so this right here is one of the most important areas and CFR, I for the life of me, don't remember what it stands for, but it is um, basically your quality control. So if you have it set to zero, it's a lossless codex, which means the file sizes are absolutely huge. Um, 23 is the base for CFR and is pretty good, especially if you're just doing time lapses. It's perfectly fine to leave it like this um, or not even use it at all. I just have this for um, when I record something a bit more hard like texturing and ZBrush because there's a lot of information going back and forth. So I usually have it set to 16 and it seems to work pretty well and the file sizes are relatively small. Um, now if you want to do time lapse um, of Photoshop, the thing that you're going to change most is your frames per second. So usually when I record I do three frames per second which is really choppy by itself but what you do is after you record it you take it into a video editing processor like PowerDirector or Sony Vegas or whatever floats your boat, even Windows Movie Maker lets you uh, change it. And from there you either change the frame rate or the speed of the video. 
so generally if it's an hour-long sculpt or uh, painting session I'll do it by a hundred percent so three frames up to 30 frames per second um, but if it's a long one you have to go higher 600 or 1000 um, percent so you just have to play with it and figure out what works for you but for the most part I record it three or six frames per second depending on what I'm doing and how smooth I want it to be um, and so we can just pop over to Photoshop and I can show you that this works so here's uh, a drawing I was working on a while ago and you can see there's no lag at all really and it shows up perfectly fine now if I go over here and I go to settings and video and disable arrow or sorry re-enable arrow and pop back to here you can see there's a huge amount of lag between each one of my strokes and it just it doesn't work so yeah that's all I really want to say I just wanted to let you guys know about the little arrow and how to properly set it up so here's to seeing more speed painting videos and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys soon